We will be free from that. If you'll just stand for just a minute, I want us just to lift our hands in the house tonight. And those on Facebook right where you're at, this is camp meeting night. Can you just offer the freedom of praise tonight to God? Because you are here in the house of the Lord right now, and you have been set free. If you've got salvation in your heart, wherever you're at right now, Brother Harry, we have been set free, and we are free indeed. We are free from persecution in this world, from the deceiver, from the enemy. We have been set free. Tonight, your mind shall be set free in the name of Jesus. Your heart is set free in the name of Jesus. You can have healing and the freedom in the name of Jesus right now. We declare it, thus saith the Lord God Almighty, by his stripes we are healed and we have freedom tonight. It doesn't matter if you're on Facebook or you're gathered here tonight. Let us offer the praise to God that we have freedom. He has set you free. You are not captive by your mind anymore. The enemy wants to tell you there's no healing coming. The enemy wants to tell you that the sickness and the worries, let them pile on. I'm here to tell you, God is here to set you free from the burdens, the weights of the world. God is ready to set you free at his name. And his name is Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank you. We have declared it in this house tonight. You may be seated. If you're on Facebook and if you have your Bibles, we are going to be in Philippians chapter 2 tonight for the most part. But uh, it is good to be back in the house of God. It is good to be out of the hospital. I am not used to being in the hospital. Uh, I don't think that I've ever been in the hospital more than just one night in my life. And, uh, you know, that was a scary moment for me in my, in my time. And um, all I'm going to say is, uh, you know, up front is I give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. It's only by God that I'm here right now. And every doctor I've talked to, every nurse I've talked to, every person I've come in contact with, I automatically tell them God did a miracle because it's God, not man, not me, not you. It is God that did it. And because of my church, because of hundreds of people across the world praying for me, we came together. And I thank you for interceding because I received a miracle on Wednesday night in the hospital. I, 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 will, I will preface this with a lot of times I keep things very private sometimes. I know I'm a kind of a, a public person and you see me a lot on Facebook, but I, I, I struggled with sharing uh, when I was going to the emergency room. And, and uh, I know my mom was on the phone and Pastor Robin was there. And I was like, I just don't want people to really know. I don't want people to worry. Because when I was going in the hospital, I really didn't think anything of it. And I just thought, you know, I'll be there. It might be a day and I'll be okay. But I'm going to tell you, it was a struggle in my mental and my spiritual mind. There was a part of me that had every doubt that the deceiver wanted to give me. And, and, I, and, I, and I, those who are on Facebook and those who are here right now, you know, dealing with COVID and you can't go in the hospital and you can't have family and you couldn't have friends, it becomes a very isolated, depressing state when you have nobody there. Nobody there to be by your side. No one to hold your hand. And as things progressed, I was there for the first two days, and I wasn't allowed to have anything to eat or drink. They put me on a high level of IV fluids. They, they put me on uh, IV antibiotics. They didn't know what was going on. They were monitoring me 24-7. Uh, I gave so much blood at one point uh, during the night on Monday, they couldn't get anything out of my veins. I got poked and sticked over 45 times while I was in the hospital. And every time they came in, it was more discouraging for me because I couldn't get the blood out. They couldn't do anything. They had me on the highest level of IV. They're putting the fluids in me. And nothing happened. Tuesday, I, I felt okay. I had the procedure, and they finally got me through it. Tuesday night, I was okay. Wednesday, I woke up, and I was back in that state. I felt good most of the day. But that afternoon, I, I began to crash again. The pain, the sickness, it all started overwhelming. And you better believe the enemy wanted to jump in my mental mind. And I'll tell you this, sometimes we need a spiritual whooping. 
Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but I, I'm old school. My mom and my dad got on the phone, and they gave me the spiritual whipping I need. My dad began to preach to me right there through text messages and on the phone and on Facebook. My mom and dad called me immediately, began to start praying. They asked everyone to start praying. They sent out prayer requests, and all of you began to pray. The church began to pray. A pastor was telling me people over in Africa, our brothers and sisters were praying. People all over the world, people were messaging my sister that they didn't even know was connected to me, offering prayer. Hundreds of people praying. And I was at my wit's end. I was at my last breath. I was at my last moment. I couldn't take it anymore. I was so sick, so painful, didn't know what was going on in my body. But as they began to pray, heaven showed up in my hospital room. God showed up in my hospital room. And I know people can't fathom that. People don't understand it. People don't understand healings and miracles. And we can read the scripture and we, we hear about the parables and, and we hear about people being healed. But I'm telling you, Jesus started walking the halls of Lewis Gale Hospital. And I begin to cry out and I begin to pray. And my mom and dad, they whipped me spiritually. They said, son, you pick yourself up. You may have pain for the rest of your life, but you will give God the glory for who he is and what he's done. You will praise him through this storm. You will praise him through the pain. And you begin to rebuke it. You rebuke the sickness. You rebuke that enemy right now. Don't let him captivate you. Don't let him in your mind. Don't think those thoughts, Robbie. I needed it. So I got off the phone with them, and I began to pray out loud again. And I stood in front of that Lewis Gale Hospital in that room, and I stood at the window, and I just began to praise God. And I said, God, that's right. I'm going to praise you right now. I'm sick and I'm tired, but I need a healing, Jesus. I need you now. I need a miracle in this body. And I begin to cry and speak in tongues, and the Holy Spirit had a visitation with me there. And the interpretation came, and it said, I'm going to heal you, Robbie. I'm going to bring peace to you. I opened my eyes, and the nurse came busting in the door. She looked one way, saw me praying and crying. She ran back out. Later on, I laid down in the hospital bed. I put my phone right beside me. I started putting the worship music on. I listened to my Gaithers. I listened to my, my Christian revival music. I listened to everything I had. And I started praising him. And it was almost instantly that God began to start healing my body. That he not only healed my body, he healed my mind. He healed my heart. He started touching me. He started restoring me. How can it be? Well, I'm here to tell you, there's the ultimate physician that we serve. He created our bodies. He put breath into our lungs. He can restore muscles. He can get rid of cancer. He can heal you of diabetes. My God can heal, and he is healing. And as I laid in that bed, I began to feel, feel, not fail, feel, the hand of God almost doing surgery in me, Brother Ken. I begin to feel the hand of God begin to touch right here. And it wasn't something that you feel like a soreness. It wasn't something that I felt was just a burning sensation. No, I felt if God had a needle with doing surgery in my body, and I felt it tap, 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 tap. Tap, and I begin to cry out, thank you, Lord, for doing the work right now. And it began, it just kept going, tap, tap, tap. And I felt the restoration, Ashley. I felt the healing power. I was overwhelmed. And then it was almost if God, I felt this warmth come over my shoulders because guess what? Here comes the enemy. No, Robbie, that's not God. No, Robbie, that's just you feeling the effects of medicine. No, Robbie, that's just you feeling what you're going to feel that's going to be feeling good. No, I said no, enemy. I said that's my healer, the ultimate physician, doing surgery right now. You say, how can it be? I'm telling you, I am a product of faith. I began, if you don't recall, I preached that Sunday, and then I was in the hospital, and I started recalling every scripture. The righteous live by faith. The righteous live by faith, and my faith is in God, and I call 
called out and he answered. I didn't think about it. I called out and believed you are on time, God. So he began to heal. He started healing me. And that's the first time. Now, remember, I went in Sunday night at 6 o'clock. I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I hadn't watched TV for almost three days. And everybody knows me. I love TV. No food, no nothing. This is the first time I only literally slept maybe one hour at a time every day. And God almost just put me to rest. He laid me down in those green pastures. I just began to rest, and I slept for about four hours. When I woke up, I just said, thank you, God, because he knew I needed it. Now, you're telling me, okay, so you felt that surgery. When my dad got the call Tuesday after I came out of my procedure, they told my dad it was a mixture of two different diseases. They said, it's going to be one of these or the other. It's going to be somewhere here in the middle. Because that's just what we feel. We really couldn't see much, but this is what we thought. And we took a, a sample, and we're going to send it out for that testing, the biopsy, and we're going to test it. But this is pretty much what we think is going to happen. So you can imagine, God started healing. Well, Thursday morning, I wake up, I have a good day. I think I had one pain pill that whole day. Friday, one pain pill that whole day. So I looked at the doctor. The hospital doctor, and I'm going to tell you, they were good to me. Every time a nurse came in, they were, and I did forget that nurse did come back after I was praying, and she just put her hand on my chest, and she said, I know you needed that. You know, that's how God works. It wasn't scary. This person knew. God knew. He put people in my place and ready. So Friday, I'm getting ready to check out. The doctor comes in. He said, we don't have to put you on any special diet. We, we just really can't find anything. He said, your test haven't come back, so we, we just, we don't know. But we're going to send you home with some medicine just to help everything calm down. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you can eat whatever you want. Well, I asked every question I could to that doctor. And I questioned him, and he said, I, we just, we're just going to keep going this path. Well, here comes the other specialist doctor. She pretty much came in, and every time I saw her, she was pretty kind of a, just a stern, not really, no emotions, no nothing. Well, you're going to feel like this. You're going to feel like that. We don't have any results every day. Friday, she came in. She sat down. She goes, I don't know what happened. The doctor's confused. Everything that came back is a conflict of it. We thought it was this, and the biopsy came back and said, it's none of that. They said, the doctor said, I know what I saw, and this hasn't happened too much. And I said, ma'am, I said, there's no conflict. I said, my God healed me. She said, well, yeah, probably. She said, well, we're going to send off those tests again, and we want to do another test. Well, the doctor called me the next day. Robbie, your test came back negative for any of that stuff. And I called, and I have a follow-up with the other specialists. And they didn't put me on anything. They're like, well, we'll just see and follow up. And I said, no. I said, you don't understand. My God healed me. I'm a firm believer that we give credit to God. We don't need to shy away from our testimonies. We don't need to shy away from the truth. And the truth is, God's still in the healing business. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I had my follow-up with my PCP this week. They, they, they came in, and they were like, well, let's, let's see what's going on. we got to get eyes on you. Look at all my stuff. Yep, everything's there. Everything I just told you guys, that's, yep, you're, you're right. I said, it's funny, though. They, they had this medicine ready to go at discharge, and then they decided not to do it. I said, you know why? Because God healed me. I said, I don't know if you believe in God. I said, I'm not going to try to put it on you. But it's not, I believe in God, and he did a miracle. She said, oh, no, I believe in the power of prayer. And then she began to share her testimony about her father who had cancer. And he called her and said, I've got cancer and all this and yada, yada, yada. They thought the worst. And he said, I went to church, and I prayed for my healing. And she said, guess what? He got healed of cancer 
So yes, I believe that God's a healer. See where that snowball effect happens? We're seeing the effects that God's still in the healing business. But we have to believe and trust and call on. And so my, my, my end result to this is, yes, I'm healed. And what I should have did at the beginning, church, is I should have called Robin and said, you put me on the prayer list because I know God's a healer. Get my family praying for him. That was my mistake. We can't be too proud to ask for prayer. We can't be too proud not to share our business because sometimes we need a little help because there's a reason the scripture says when two or three are gathered in his name, he will be there. And I'm telling you, church, we are in a day of revival where God is answering prayers. If you want a testimony, you're looking at one right now. Every thought crossed my mind. So where did I go from there? I started going back to my roots. Every day I get up. And I start putting the healing on me. You know where that healing comes from? It comes from my prayer time and it comes from the Bible. And when those thoughts start creeping in and when those enemy, the enemy trickery and little trials start coming in, every devotion that I've read has applied to my life and restored my faith and given me strength and bringing me peace. And you know, it just, it's a catapult effect. And, and you meet with the chiropractor and I love my chiropractor. He's a great chiropractor, but he said, you need to take this supplement and this supplement and this supplement, and it's not medicinal. But I told him, you know, what is medicinal? The Bible and God and prayer. That is the medicinal that I need. That's the medicine I need. And that's the medicine we need. Is anybody happy about that testimony? I've been holding it in. I know pastor said I was a firebug this morning, and I told him. I said, it's dangerous to give me a microphone because you know I'm going to preach a sermon at. That's what I do with offerings. That's what I do with altar call. That's what I'm going to do if I take you to the kids to the nursery. I'm going to give you a message. So let me dig in just for a few minutes. When I came out of that hospital, God led me to Philippians chapter 2. Now, the history everybody knows with Philippians chapter 2 is this is Paul. Paul was, he had been having troubles. He, he's been beat down. He's been arrested. He's been chained. They even think that during this time, this is when he was in his chains. And why does Paul keep going with all the trials and tribulations and struggles he has? And I applied this, you know, it was almost like God shared with me, like, this is the reason. Because I just preached a message that God gave me about uh, my, my increasing my faith. And I need a, a faith increase. And, and guess what? I got a faith increase when I got out of that hospital. My faith increased tenfold. And, and, and you better believe the prayers that I prayed for our church. And every time that we see that prayer come across the, the chain uh, email that Robin sends to us, you better believe I am praying healing. I've got it on my phone. I'm praying for you because I still believe in healing. But Paul needs motivation. And Paul says, where does my motivation come? And it comes from joy. Everybody say joy. 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 Come on, get a little soul. Get a little Pentecostal. Joy. Joy. There we go. Your attitude and joy. So let's start with chapter 2, verse 1. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness, compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfishness, selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Okay? Now remember, this goes with Pastor's sermon this morning. It goes with the worship this morning. It goes with the worship tonight. God's trying to tell us something, church. Come on. 
that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We have to be like Jesus. And coming out of that hospital, I want nothing more than to be a servant of God. I want nothing more to be the hands and feet just like Jesus. My goal coming out of that hospital was to share the testimony, lead people to Christ, and to let people know that he can heal. I don't want to stop this was my motivation, and Paul had motivation. He'd been chained, he'd been beaten, he's in prison. This is what he says, your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus. So I'm going to share something here. Paul suffered so much in 10 years since founding the church of Philippi. Beatings, imprisonments, shipwreck, hostility from jealous competitors, and surely sometimes he must have wondered, is it worth all the pain? Even as he writes this letter, he is under arrest in chains for Christ. But whenever Paul's thoughts turn to Philippi, the elderly apostle's spirits lift. If someone had bluntly asked him, Paul, tell me what keeps you going through the hard times, he likely would have answered this way in the words straight out of the chapter in Philippians 2. Paul reveals that the source of his irrestible drive, it's joy. Joy is what keeps him going. Jesus, in this like hymn that he sings to him and takes on the form of man and servant, he pours out his life to others, and Paul wants to pattern himself just like that. Pour out everything I have because I have the joy of the Lord in me. Now, we offer reference to Christians that they're some of the happiest people in the world. Right? We know Brother Roy and Barbara are always full of joy. Barbara wants to give me a hug every time she sees me because she's so happy, and that's the way she is with all of you. She wants to love you because she's got God in her life. That's what keeps her going. That's what keeps her young. And if you start talking to Brother Roy, you better believe you're going to hear a sermon. You're going to hear revival, and you're going to feel God because he's got what? He's got what? Paul could have given up so many times. And think about where you're at in your life. How many times could you have given up? The sicknesses, the pain, the discouragement, the roughness that you just deal with, family loss. You can give up at any point, any time. But why do we push through? Because we have the joy of the Lord motivating us, pushing us. Because we know there is a reward. And what's that reward? Heaven. 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 I don't know about you, but I'm tired of this body. Anybody tired of your body? I'm tired of the discouragement. I'm tired of the oppression. I'm tired of the hurt. And Steve, I can't wait till when I go to heaven and every time I'm there, I can walk without a hurt, without a pain, without a worry, without anything bothering me. No effects, no hurts, no worries. Can somebody agree with that? That there's joy coming and the day's coming where we will all receive the ultimate healing. Oh, Paul could have gave up. Paul could have quit. Paul could have been discouraged. So I think about my joy. It wasn't too long ago, and I say that because I'm still young. I'm only 40. When I came to Harvest, I was, you know, very young, and I had teenage years here. My junior year, I, I broke my leg. I shattered my leg. My dad reminded me about those times he prayed. He reminded me about the times of, of healing and times that, that I struggled he reminds me one time that I never knew he was in that room. And we were in, I was in my bedroom. I was struggling with a fever. I was struggling with depression. I had just had this accident on the soccer field. I was laid in bed, nothing I can do, helpless. Bathing, bathroom, it's all up to my mom and dad and my grandparents. That's what I had. But he reminded me that there was one night that he walked in my bedroom and he met and he pleaded the blood of Jesus Christ over me right there. 
I never woke up. But he pleaded the blood of Jesus for healing right there in that room. And he began to see the miracle of God in that room as I was beginning to be delivered, as everything began to take it away. And I'm telling you, the God of seven, when I was 17, is still the God of when I'm 40. And it only gets better with our faith. And so I remember there was a pastor that came to visit me. And we have these here. They're called prayer cloths. Now, again, the anointing oil, the prayer cloth, it has no magical powers. It's a representation. And this pastor came in and he said, our church prayed for you. Here's the prayer cloth. And I remember I tucked it in my cast and I left it there and I pleaded God to heal me every day. And I'm going to tell you, I was one of those guys that God healed. I had the short cast. I mean, God, God really healed. And I trusted in the power of prayer then. The Bible was beside my bed. I remember going up and having conversations with my grandmother at the table. She was a God-loving woman that, that just read her Bible. She was a Sunday school teacher for years and, and different things like that. She took me and my sister all the time to the Radford Church. And, and I would hobble up there in the middle of the night and I'd ask my grandmother questions. Because I had faith. Well, when I was in the hospital, you guys know I usually have a prayer towel. I forgot it tonight for whatever reason. I just guess I was just too excited to share the word with you tonight. But I, I found I had a washcloth, just a little plain white washcloth. And I'm going to tell you right now, that was, my, that was my prayer cloth. That was my prayer cloth. I didn't need any anointing oil. I didn't need any, anybody praying for it because I knew I felt hundreds of prayers that night. But I took that prayer cloth, Sherry. And I put it beside my bed and I just held on and I just cried. And I said, God, I surrender it all to you. It doesn't matter what happens here tonight. I feel the healing touch, Lord, but I'm still going to trust you. And I'm still going to keep on to the promises that you're my healer. And I just waved that white washcloth. And if they had a camera in the room, they'd have probably locked me in a crazy room because I was just praising, praising God. You see, it's not what you have. It's what you mean by what you're doing. And our actions speak louder than words. And I'm here to tell you, you can offer God a sacrifice with every breath you have. You don't have to have money. You don't have to have a job. All you have to do is come by yourself and say, Lord, I surrender all. That's what I believe Paul had. He didn't worry about money. He didn't worry about the, the donations. He didn't worry about gifts. He didn't worry that he was just so beaten down and persecuted because he knew he had the joy of the Lord. That was his focus. So let's flip over. We're in chapter 4 now. In chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts. He will not only guard your hearts, He will guard your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers... Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and God, the God of peace will be with you. Do you hear Paul's instructions? We've got to testify, church. We've got to lift up the name of Jesus, the name above every name. And that's what he was doing. Now, if I went down this room and you could share your testimonies, I know we have testimonies. But I also know we have prayer warriors. Anybody like to walk the, the halls of your house at night sometimes? Anybody? Is that a little crazy? Is that a little cray-cray? That's some crazy stuff, ain't it? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, 
the faith of our actions and believing and praising God through every storm, I'm telling you, there is power in the name of Jesus. We don't just sing the songs just to, to have a good singing and a, and, a good, and a good feel of these words. And, and we don't just read the scripture just to say, guess what, I got a little bit of word in me. No, the scripture tells us, do not be anxious. Be confident in the power of God. Be reminded that he will bring you joy. Rejoice in the Lord as always. And again, I say rejoice. We say the scripture because we have faith in it. We read the scripture because we believe it. It's not just what we say is a roadmap. It's not just what we say to have to make us feel confident. No, there is life in this book. And I'm telling you, Every day, for whatever reason, God has amplified my vision, my heart, my ears to where I read the scripture, Patty, and I start receiving healings every day. Don't tell me God can't do it. Try it. God's not going to tempt you. The enemy's going to tempt you. But my God says if you want healing, Put your money where your mouth is and try on some God. Don't just read it as it's a good book. We can all get a good book. We all want to hear a good story. But I promise you, the faith that Paul had and what we need to have right now is that God is trying to share something special with you. If you are in tune with God, he will be in tune with you as far as letting you know where you need to go, where you need to work, who you need to talk to, what answers you need. I'm telling you, every financial decision, hospital decision, medical decision, life decision, you can find the peace of God right here in the Lamb's book of life that he's going to give us one day. But right now, he's giving you a book of life right here saying, I want to share something with you. Hmm. The worship team's getting ready to come. I'm wrapping up. In chapter 4 still, verse 10, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you have had no opportunity to show it. So I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances I know what is to be in need, and I know what is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Verse 13, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can do everything. Everything through him who gives me strength. You see, we become a society, and you can go, y'all can go ahead and get on. I'm, I'm going to finish. We become a church that sometimes is, is too content. We, we, we feel that the prayers are only going to be answered in a certain amount of time. Paul said, I've learned to be content with not having anything or with having plenty. And that night, my father told me, son, you may have a pain for the rest of your life, but you need to still praise God through it. And that was my reminder with Paul. I've had a good life. I've had plenty. And I've been hungry. But I'm still going to praise him.